Hey everybody, it's Rob Shapiro from In the Mind Of. Today I'm with Donis Gill. Donis works with me. Donis is kind of my uh, right hand, left hand person. He and I worked together for years, and, and we've been coming. We've been talking about the um, pyramid or the hierarchy of re rehabilitation. And kind of, we're going to go over a little bit of the history. Welcome, Donis. Thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. It's always fun to talk. We always talk about we should always have a camera. And finally, we put one up. So that's awesome. So tell us a little bit. What when did you start the hierarchy? Like when did you first learn about it? So e even a little further back than that, like I'd, I remember getting started as like a new clinician and uh, kind of having that feeling of, of like, I want to help people, but I didn't really have like a good structure or basis. Even like you, you go through stuff in school, you learn how, like how to do the basics, how to learn your anatomy and all this stuff, but you don't really get like a specific thought process that like makes sense with patients. So um, I started out working with Rob Panarello and, and Tim Stump in our clinical excellence department and they had this system that came from Alva Mio. So Alva mm -hmm. Mio, it's, uh, he's a strength and conditioning coach, one of the legends in the field. He uh, used to work with the, the Bulls and San Francisco 49ers, mm -hmm. uh, really good friends with Rob. Uh, so he had this pyramid system that went over the different level of, of physical qualities that were required for people to reach that athletic ability. So Rob took that idea and then incorporated it into more of the rehab process. And to me, I was like, that was the first time I was like, oh, that, that makes so much sense. It, it gives you a nice system that you can follow and systematically think through how to take somebody from where they're at to where they need to be. Mm -hmm. And it also gave, gave us a, a a, a way to assess where they were in that continuum. Um, so Rob and Tim took that and ran with it and essentially used it as a basis for for what we have today. So like, um, it was good to finally have something that, that worked. Uh, the other side of it too is, is uh, when you came along and you saw the need for having a really good rehab-based evaluation system. Cause the system that we had was really just based on on how to get like an athlete from decondition all the way up to high performance, but you had a lot of good insights as to how to classify in a simple way uh, patients so that you can get them started from where they were. So the other stage. Yeah, and the cool part, and then we were talking about you and I kind of came in with the evaluation part, and then you'll see in the pyramid we added the pain part. Because we're like, you know, we're not, you know, Rob and, and, and group are working with these athletes. They had pain, but pain wasn't sometimes their primary thing. Yeah. And they probably assumed automatically that they got into that more higher level stuff that somebody had taken care of the pain. And, you know, we are, we have to teach our people. And a great point before about, um, you know, always teaching and, you know, you teach these great things and like all these things and it says, okay, now just treat, treat. And then they kind of have these list of things to treat, but where do I start? Yeah. And this, you know, I think of this and it's been great for me and it's so simple, but it's, to me it's like a roadmap. Like where do I start? Okay, I did an evaluation and I put them in some type of classification, which is great. It gives me an idea how to predict how they might do, right, based on the classification. Then we start doing the pain part because what we're, we're, we're thinking about the pain. It's like, all right, if someone's in seven, eight, nine, ten of the pain, it's really hard to do anything. Yeah. I mean, your, your goal is to calm the pain down. You know, that is your goal. Your goal is not to have them run miles that day you know it's yeah. the pain component of it actually reminds me of one of the, the mantras that I had when I first started which oh, is this is a big mantra guy you'll <laughs> see yeah so like <laughs> the for me again now having a system to really use and kind of lean into I started kind of developing little things that I like had as my own little uh, self-made system so one of the little mantras I had was like you know pain and swelling inhibit muscle function so that kind of went into that whole uh, part of like hey if you have too much pain that's not gonna let your muscles function. So how are we gonna train somebody that to start become more functional if there's so much pain that's preventing it from happening? Mm -hmm. So making sure that you're getting that person through a, a lower, low enough pain level that allows them to actually move their muscles and, and engage that without it being shut down. Yeah, interesting part, like in the whole PT world, there's all these, there's the Maitland, the McKenzie, and the thing we had to early on deal with is our company grew and we had people from all different types of uh, you know, approaches. And 
what's good about the pyramid in my, in my opinion is that the pyramid it doesn't matter what you do it, whatever your approach is to pain whatever your approach is to mobility deficits you manipulate I mobilize somebody does muscle energy it doesn't matter as long as we went through a thinking process and I think that's kind of for me early on and then as a student it's like all right it's okay I don't have to learn a specific system maybe I, we can learn techniques that work best and that's okay yeah what, you know? what I like about it too is it it, it becomes sort of like an algorithm so it, it's an algorithm of how the body works which is kind of how like early on how I approached rehab is like if I understand how the body works then I understand what the body needs so the hierarchy gave gave me a structure that essentially taught me how how the body works and likes to progress so if you know how it's like being a mechanic is a, an analogy I like came across not that long ago it's like if you're a mechanic what makes you a really good mechanic is understanding how the car works Mm -hmm. So if you know exactly how the car is built, how the car is supposed to function, then you can figure out what's wrong with it, and then right, you don't have to memorize certain techniques for that. You just know the process. Yeah. You know, you know the why. Exactly. You know why why the car is not working. Then you can use whatever technique or tool you have to then fix that specific problem. You don't have to know the tool. Like if you know what the problem is, then you can pick the appropriate tool. Or you make your own yeah. tool. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you can make but, your own tool. yeah. So, but in that case, if if you know what the problem is and you know what you need to do to fix it, you either obviously you may have you may only have certain types of tools available to you. In in our case, in rehab, you, maybe you only know Maitland. Maybe you only know uh, uh, McKenzie approaches. This way, you can use the, the knowledge that you have and then treat the the issue based on the needs of that patient. And then we always do like the Maitland-esque like test retest. Yep. So what do you do? Well, I'm not sure. Let's see what the category, do a technique, retest what we're trying to find, which is good. Yep. You had said something recently, which I thought was interesting. It, you know, you get excited about talking about the pyramid and the thinking process. And I think recently you said you talked to somebody and they kind of looked and go, well, oh, that's basic. And then I think they kind of, the light kind of, right, the light bulb went off. Remember yeah. that one? Yeah, and, and I said that the Basic is good, but if you have a good understanding of what the basics are, then you have something to fall back into. So you're you're not you don't have to worry about trying to figure out uh, a system for any patient that comes in. You you now understand how the body works. You now understand how the like what how that patient actually functions, so you can assess what's going on and and then solve their issue. So even though it sounds Simple, it gives you a way to kind of organize your thoughts. Simple is sometimes right, it's refreshing. Yeah, right? It's exactly. not a crazy system. You have to kind of figure, learn, learn. You just get to understand the process and do your checklist. And one of the biggest things that, like as a new clinician, like for me, I, I, I was looking for that kind of protocol approach. Like, all right, if I, like if then, like if I see this, then I do this. And that, I, I feel like a lot of times, like even students and even myself when I first got started, was if I see this, what do I do? So this just gives you more of a, 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 a broader understanding like of what's going on because not every patient is going to look the same. Mm -hmm. Like every person's different. Every person has slightly different. They may start different parts of the pyramid. Yeah, exactly. Right. So yeah, the it, this gives you a basis for critical thinking, which was well, back in the day when like Rob and Tim, were, that was like the biggest thing is like how do we help people have a good basis for critical thinking? Because anything that's within our, our – thinking scope we can figure out quickly because we have enough ex experience but how do we empower people with something that they can use to then think through unknown uh, issues you right. know what I mean so mm -hmm. like if we have if, if you have a patient that you've never seen before you can at least figure out the basics or, or, or the deficiencies or the deficits that they have based on where they rank in that that hierarchy right and the cool part doesn't matter where people are we've seen, I've seen it with you know I did it undergrad start teaching it there we've done it with our um, our new hires and our, our residents kind of have that process and when they the fun part this weekend just taught with the residents and I, I we went through a case and they, they kind of all over the place and so let's just follow the pyramid let's go what if it's you know the bottom part let's get it let's get them into a, a let's get them into a category right figure what kind of in. oh it's a motor control problem okay well the patient did the patient have a pain seven eight nine or ten yeah let's let's what are ways give me yeah. five ways you can treat that Yep. And in multiple ways, you could do reflex stuff, you could do positional stuff, you could say, take your meds, we're going to do modalities, but know where you are, and don't just start doing. I mean, one of my, you know, we'll go over, uh, I would love to do more of these, and each time go over 
understand each part of the pyramid in more detail. Yep. But sometimes I'll find like in the clinic, people doing like bird dog, like bird dog exercises, but they, they lost, they like, they're all over the place. They ha they've kind of missed part of the pyramid. They're thinking they're in the strengthening or even the higher level power, even becomes power or whatever they're doing. And realizing that they missed, somebody just doesn't have the mobility to get into that range and they're getting it from someplace else. And that's what the beauty, if you just kind of go through it, you can really uh, kind of guide someone through a program well. One one of the best things that happened to me in, in like early on in my career is having is working with a a PT who was a younger PT and he basically asked me pretty much for everything that I did with, with the patients or, or all the things that I tried to do with them is why. Mm -hmm. And and that that was like that got stuck with me because I was gonna, like he's gonna ask me again. I was like <laughs> anything that I'm <laughs> teaching them or, or showing them or technique, he's gonna ask me why, so I have to have a good why or a good reason which Back then, I was like, "This is annoying," but now I'm like, "It makes perfect sense." You right. have to have a why for what you're doing. It's still a little annoying, yeah, but okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, but you still have to have a good reason for what, why you're doing the things that you're doing. There has to be a reason why you're trying to execute uh, that activity. It can't just be like, "This is what I saw somebody else do for this condition." Right? Because it, it might not work. That person has a different. They might have different part of the pyramid. Yeah. Just because it worked for somebody else doesn't mean it's going to work for everyone. Right. Cool stuff. Yeah, I think that's what we'll do is I'd love to, in future stuff, kind of go through, little by little, we'll, we'll kind of talk through the pyramid. Yeah, yeah. and I, I, I think going a, a little bit more in depth. Uh, we also have a couple uh, Technique Peak videos on on the YouTube channel too, so uh, we're, we're going to put out some more of that stuff. Uh, but, you know, people in, in the comments, if you have any questions about the system, we'll be more than happy to, to answer those questions too, so feel free to, to drop a comment below. Yeah, the two of us were kind of, when we get together, we, uh, this is probably, this is perfect. This is like putting on a microphone. This is Donis and I having a beer, yeah. you know. What about this? What about this? What about, what part of the pyramid? How do they do it? How do we get people to do it? So, kind of finally put the camera in front. And uh, I really think it's making, it, to me, it's exciting. Every time I explain it, it's like, wow, simplistic, but how cool is it that we can kind of guide someone through? And it's yeah. nothing, usually, like we talked about, it's nothing different than you've already done. It's just now giving you a, a little a better structure. Well, we think, is it what I think, you think? A little better structure. Yeah. A little more efficient, more effective. Something you can lean on. Like, e even through our, our onboarding process, we tell people, like, you, you fall to the level of your your system. So if you have a system, especially if you're busy or, or like, you're having a difficult day or other things come in and, like, blow up your, your plan, because that's bound to happen. That's life. Well, like, it will happen. Yeah. So... <laughs> So if, if something blows up your plan, at least you have something you can fall back on and quickly reset yourself and be able to get back to. Right, it's funny you say that because, I, I mean, it sounds weird, I don't, I don't think I'm look old enough, but I, I've done this, this is 33 years later, right? And I still see patients and everyone, you know, I'll take a piece of paper or my iPad and I'll, okay, I'm having a little trouble, what did I miss? What did, did I skip a step? Let me go back, how's this, how's this, and this, and it's still, it's a great way to kind of learn about case studies and think things through. That kind of reminded me of a, a one of the things that, that happened before, like when I was growing up as a, a clinician, the funny thing is like the body will show you the things that you miss. So as you're like helping somebody get through the process and stuff, if you missed a step or if you forgot to do something, that will come up no, later no, no, on. No, no, no. <laughs> it, it, it always shows up. So like yeah. it, it's unfortunate that, that you had to kind of make up for it later, but if you if you have a system in place that helps you catch those things early on and see the things that you could potentially miss, then this saves you and your patient time. I mean, there's doesn't like, when you miss those little things, like it just takes them a little longer to get back, I get but, there. I get but there. You, you still get there, you know? But right. this gives you a nice framework that you can think through those and catch those little things that you may miss along the way, just because we're, I mean, it, it's really mostly because we're trying to get these patients back as soon as possible. So. This helps you kind of clean it up and, and make sure that you cover all the bases you need. Agreed. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for joining us in the mind of Rob Shapiro and Donna Skill. Yep. Thanks, guys.